you were my Sunday school kids, I'd make you do it again, but we won't do that. It's 8 o'clock. Uh, welcome to the first Sunday in Epiphany, also the baptism of our Lord. Um, uh, today we uh, will be led by Pastor John Fearman. Pastor Hillier is still in Arizona. Um, uh, his mother's uh, funeral was yesterday, I believe, um, you know, judging, or depending on how the uh, uh, airlines and stuff are going, he'll be back Tuesday or Wednesday this week. Um, but uh, yesterday was his mother's uh, funeral. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, looks like we got some stuff uh, starting back up. On January 17th, the Monday Night Crafts return. Uh, there is a, um, an error. The uh, Women of Eternal Hope are not going to meet on January 21st. That's a Friday. They're going to meet on uh, Thursday, January 20th. Um, let's see. And there's also some different youth ones, but there's a few weeks uh, uh, still for some of that. Uh, after the second service today, we will be uh, taking um, the uh, Christmas decorations down. So it's always kind of, we get to like the festival of Epiphany, which is uh, light and Jesus kind of showing us, uh, uh, we get that sneak peek of who Jesus is. Um, but it's also uh, the empty season because all of our Christmas decorations go away. But today, after the second service, we'll be taking all those down. So if you'd like to come back and help with that, that would be awesome. And then there are a few um, birthdays, I think. Yep, so we have uh, this week, today, Sue, Sue Steinhorst. And on Tuesday, uh, David Sedwin. Um, no anniversaries this week. And the flowers, flowers are back because the lady at Cub Foods was gone for a while. But the flowers are back, and they are placed today by the Stramquist family in memory, in memory of Brad's dad. And then uh, in our prayers today, uh, or this week, uh, just remember uh, Pastor um, as he uh, travels back, um, and then all those people who are uh, working in the healthcare system to fight COVID and all those who are feeling its effects, and also keep uh, Pastor John Fearman and the ministry of Clef in your prayers and would you like to just go with the hymn or would you like to say hello pastor fearman i'll get back with you in an hour awesome <laughs> we'll sing the first the first the
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of our sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered here to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As they called and ordained servant of Christ and by his command, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritance with him of everlasting life, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. says the Lord, and it's an uppercase, no, big letters. That's the name of God. So in the Hebrew, you'll find that the Yahweh Elohim, and that is the cause of all things. So whenever you see Lord in uppercase, it's
It's the official name of God, Yahweh Elohim, in Hebrew. But now says the Lord, that is the cause of all things, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the name and the flame shall not consume you. For I, the Lord, that is the cause of all things, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I give you Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba, in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes, and honored, and I love you. I give you men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offering from the offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Do not withhold. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and that I made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sin still live in it. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if 
that we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But for the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Excellent, excellent. How about water? Would you use water to to make these yeah. stick together? That would actually kind of work, wouldn't it? But would that work for very long? No, no, no. But what do you think God uses to connect us to him? Does he use tape? Does he use a stapler? Does he use this? 
uses his love. That's, that's true. But he also uses water. Water to unite us. Can you do this here? Unites us with him. But it's not just the water by itself because I took a shower today. That didn't, yep. And that didn't unite me with God, that shower. But water united with God's word, his promises, unites us to him. As it says in epistles here, it says, We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. Well, that's, not, that's, not, that's not very happy, right? I mean, it is. But only because of this next part, because then it says, For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. So we're reunited with him in his death, and we're united with him in his resurrection, all because water is united with the promises of God. Can you unite your hands and say a prayer with me? Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, keep us in our baptismal faith, now and always. Amen. May return to your seats. We'll sing the next hymn. <coughs>
the text for today. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. In the name of Jesus, who alone seeks and saves the lost, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. From this point on, from the baptism of Jesus by John, we're not allowed to complain about injustice anymore. And we must never despair of God working out everything for our good. We must never despair of God's love. Since the day that Jesus was baptized, when all the people were being baptized, the words must never pass our lips even if the thought rattles around in our heads that says, that's not fair. Instead, those who wrong us must be the highest in our prayers to our Maker for forgiveness, for peace, for conversion, for reconciliation. And I know that you don't have the heart to do this any more than I do. That's what our baptism is for to tell us every morning, as we remember as Luther tells us, to <coughs> drown ourselves in the water of baptism and rise anew each day a new person. So despair of yourself and your faithlessness and your faithfulness all you want, but never give up the hope that the promise made over you when you were baptized, never doubt that that promise is true. You are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. That's the benefit of Jesus' baptism for you. And that's the promise made over you the day you were baptized also. For in him the love of God is earned, deserved, and fitting. For the Holy Son of God loves the Father also. Not like people think today of, of love, as some sentimental mushiness inside, or general good feelings. No, the Son's love for the Father is that He does what the Father commands. And most of all, first of all, from the very foundation of the world, to agree with the Father that He would go where sinners go, to hell, take what sinners must take, and be our friend. For us, the promise means something so different. God's loving care over us is not earned, not one single bit. And we may say now that when we love God, it's a biblical phrase, it's true. But we pray God doesn't scrutinize that claim too closely. And by the Spirit who descended on Jesus, the same Spirit Jesus baptizes us with the day we were baptized, the Holy Spirit in with fire, which comes down through us, through the law and the gospel, in his word, even we begin to follow Jesus and walk in his ways. Most of all, when we befriend the worst of sinners. The gospel according to St. Luke is a great comfort for you if you are afraid of God. From the shepherds in the field that night to the apostles, after Jesus rose, the Lord speaks the same message to the elect. Fear not. And if you try to run from sin and cannot, this is gospel for you. If you know what true love is, your intercession on behalf of those who do you wrong, who seem to have no conscience, who don't do what they're supposed to do, that's the definition, by the way, of a sinner. If you know what true love is, from you should look like, but find the precious little of it flowing out from you to others, then know this, you are God's child whom he loves. With you he is well pleased. Hard to grasp that, isn't it? But this is the baptism of Jesus, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire that the baptizer John proclaimed and promised. 
If I were to sweep over the world of the last day and consume this creation, then all who desperately cling to it for the highest good. And to rescue us from that fire, our Savior washes us with the fire of the call to repent, which disturbs the conscience, shakes us out of your ease, and teaches you the true love and true life with God is so much more, so much higher than the thoughts we think when we wake up. The self-centered troubles that keep us awake when we should be praising our Maker by cheerful sleep. And no matter what the law says of us, no matter how true it all is, that we are far from the people that the commandments demand us to be, and that we are nowhere near self-sacrificing disciples that Jesus calls on us to be. Our baptism by the Holy Spirit, as we are washed with the water and the word, is a promise that we must trust. Jesus is well pleasing to God in heaven, then so are we. Jesus earned the love of his Father, so he loves us also, because of Jesus. We should hear such gospel accounts with some true feelings, a heart. Let us pray to God for a heart, that when we hear of Jesus being baptized also, when all the other people were being baptized, if we have any sort of compassion or soul or conscience, we should crumble with sympathy and shed mighty tears as we hear of him going down into the water with all the other rotten sinners. And our first reaction should be, oh no, not that. Is it going to get everything that's coming to us? Is it going to go where we go? While well, heaven swings open and the spirit of fire lands gently in the form of a dove on this man. If heaven would inspect our days very closely, heaven would open up and the spirit of God would show up quite differently. Does he know what he's getting into? Does Jesus know what he's doing by stepping into that water with all those sinners? Jesus thinks he is pleasing his Father, loved as he is loved, knowing that he's jumping into a foul pool of people. He dives right in, knowing full well that death is his future. Because we love sin, you love sin, instead of loving God. He takes his first step towards the cross, into that river. Having seen the evidence that we supply, how little we please heaven, he empties heaven that day on earth with a dove-like peace and the message from the night he was born. Glory to God. Guys, and peace. Goodwill toward men. Because Jesus was baptized, among sinners. Do you get the connection? He was crucified between sinners, for sinners. Because you are baptized, your God-given station is among sinners for their sake. Because Jesus was baptized, he was doomed to that tomb because you have been baptized, following him, your life is now to forfeit. And you must stop living for bad people. Praying for them when they chunk you in a cold grave of clay. Because Jesus was baptized, his resurrection from the dead makes your baptism a daily rising from sin, from yesterday, from a bad conscience. And now he reigns on, in heaven on his throne. And don't you ever think once again that heaven is less thrilled with you, not because of your performance, which isn't all that bad, by the way. The Holy Spirit doesn't allow that. Heaven was pleased with Jesus that day, and now that he has ascended to heaven, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are well pleased with you.
probably never heard this from any pulpit. What's coming next? You poor women. You've had it hard in this world. Adam pointing his finger at you when death was on the line. Not a good sign for her daughters of Eve. I mean, is your husband rough? Your son uncaring? Do men show you less than the highest honor that you were made to receive? Your baptism tells you that your day is for now. Not sorrow and regret or self-destructive behavior and hopeless thoughts. Your baptism tells you that there is one man who still thinks of you and the reason he doesn't burn the whole place up right now. And this man is God, Jesus. And he will come swiftly with vengeance to judge both the living and the dead. With that promise on you every morning, love your husbands. Pray for them. They should rightly be lost. They've been stitched to you for their sake. Give them hope. Pray for your children, and they will be blessed. Intercede for sinners, now that you've been named with the name from on high. Some days you don't want to. Those are the best days of all, because the gospel says that when our Maker had no reason for coming to be kind to us, he sent his Son. So men, love your wives. Your baptism says that you must repent of what you have been doing with them. And your baptism says that your hope of doing right by your better half, and that's true, is God giving you a pass now, having heat on his son, what should have been heat on you. Christians, repent. Turn from you judging others to see if they are worthy of you doing what God commands you to do for everyone. Run as fast as you can from picking and choosing whom you are going to serve. And by the example of Christ being baptized when all the other people were, we must never stop again pleading to heaven for pardon and offering ourselves as sacrifices for every man, woman, and child, especially for those who do us harm. And we must never give up because heaven is well pleased with us now. God calls us his sons and his daughters. He tells you that he loves you with him. And that's not just a bunch of words. It is as real as the baby in the manger, the Son of God dead on the cross, as real as the body and blood of Jesus that you eat and drink in the Holy Sacrament, given and shed for you now for the forgiveness of sins, because we've been believing the heavenly promise from our baptism. That's the Savior you have, my friends in Christ. A friend, the friend of sinners. Be warned. If you aren't the worst person you know, what I've said this morning to you doesn't apply to you. You are the worst person you know. Christ did not come for people from heaven that should love. If there's plenty of other people worse than you in heaven's eyes, then you have what coming on the last day is fire and destruction. When you learn how quickly the spirit of Jesus can turn from dove to scary. But if you're trying and failing, admitting that every day you are at times not even trying, if you have good days, but also days that are just full of yourself, that turns your conscience over, giving yourself the evidence that heaven should have a judgment over you that's less kind, then rejoice. Get up with your baptism every morning. Get back on your knees for others, in prayer for others, together with others. Don't run away. Don't give up. 
than for Mary. Despair of yourself all you want. Your, your track record, your religious pride, but never despair of your baptism and your Savior. Live without end in this confidence that the Maker we hardly know says over us all the time, all the time, you are my daughter, you are my son, my beloved, with you. I am well pleased because of my son. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the God of peace may keep perfect in every way. May he keep your mind, your body, and life sound and without the fault until our God Jesus Christ comes again. You can depend on him who calls you, he will do it. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. Heavenly Father, you have fulfilled all righteousness in the baptism of your beloved Son. As we have received this righteousness by our baptism into him, make us bold in faith and in fervent love, that we may live out heavenly lives even in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, as you have opened heaven to your church through holy baptism, give her faithful teachers to proclaim your Son, Jesus Christ, and that all that accords with godliness that many would repent of their sins and join him in heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve the family of O God, especially all Christian homes. Turn husband and wife toward one another in love, true love. Equip fathers and mothers in their holy duty as teachers of the faith, and preserve all children in the saving faith and certain promises of their baptism into everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus, is the true Christ and the true King of this world. Grant us humility and humility to the rulers of the nations, especially our President and all who serve in elected authority, and especially to those who preach his holy word for the sake of their own souls and for the good of holy people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you sent your Son to serve your people and deliver them from sin and death. Because we long for your salvation, bring us out of our affliction and uphold us all in all bruised spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have manifested yourself with the Holy Spirit in the fullness of grace at the baptism of your dear Son. With your voice, you directed us to the one who has borne our sins, that we may receive grace and forgiveness. Keep us, we implore you, in the true faith. Since we have been baptized in accordance with your command and the example of your Son, strengthen our faith by your Holy Spirit and lead us to everlasting life and salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our God, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.